Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So in this video, I'm getting back into my routine of working at the hospital. I'm going to be talking to you guys about a really important topic that I think a lot of people wanted to have me address based on the comments. And that, you know, what are the study tips that you can use while you're on your road to medicine? So, you know, studying for the med courses and the MCAT and beyond. So stay tuned. So I'm on my way into work today. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about test taking struggles and woes and what you can do to kind of help yourself be better at taking tests and also scoring better. I myself really did struggle throughout, starting from early college days to, you know, when I was taking my MCAT to when I was taking my USMLE steps at each phase of the standardized test road. And I was always, you know, having issues and really having a lot of test anxiety because of past challenges and issues. So that's something that I carried with me, I think. You know, every success usually builds confidence and that really makes a difference with your future endeavors as far as, you know, going into the test, being confident about it, not going in with like a mentality of defeat, but like a mentality of success. So hopefully these tips will help you guys as you're on your journey. So for someone like me who had crazy unrelenting test taking anxiety, I found most what was most helpful was when I created a plan for myself. So knowing my test date, you know, that's my deadline for study, I would create the hour by hour plan on how I was going to tackle covering all the topics that were necessary to study for my test. So for example, if I was like when I was getting ready for my USMLE step one, I um, knew that this was a super important test for me because I wanted to secure a spot in my first choice of residency, which was in New York City. And I knew that it was gonna be very competitive and that my grades from med school were, were really good. So I wanted to make sure that my test reflected that I was indeed you know, in the top 99th percentile. So being someone who constantly struggled with overwhelming test taking anxiety, I knew that when I was preparing to take one of the most important tests, my medical training career, the USMLE step one or the medical licensing exam, the first part of it, and that I needed to create a strategy for study and I needed to do so early on. So probably halfway through my first year of medical school, my friends that I studied with in my study group and I created a regimen. So we decided that as we were going along with our coursework for basic sciences, that we would also actually incorporate board prep. So we did that as a rolling thing. We didn't say, you know, the boards are coming up. It's two months from the boards, let's start studying for the boards. We actually studied for the boards all throughout our basic science courses in the first year of medical school. So that required us to prepare and devise a regimen or a day-to-day -day strategy for topics to cover. So I found that, you know, doing that really, really helped. So what you want to do when you're creating your regimen is think about your test deadline. How many months do you have? How many weeks do you have? And decide to break up your days into hours of study. And even from there, you can go even to subsets of an hour, 30 minute intervals of things you want to cover. So the way we devised it is that we just put our subject areas into categories and we decided that we were gonna study each of those subject areas for about an hour every day. And you know, your daily routine of studying is just going over the class content for that day or um, what might be tested on your next set of exams. So your next block exam or end of section exam. And then we decided that, you know, once the exam was getting closer, we would join as a study group and do questions together. So that might mean that you, you put your questions into like a smaller sample or practice test. So we would do that as a group. So we'd go through an exam together and discuss the answers, of course, and also the wrong choices, why they were wrong, and go through covering our knowledge of those topics that might have been brought up in the question that weren't the answer. So that's a good way to cover a lot of subject area at once. 
when you're doing the questions. So not only, you know, trying to see if you're gonna get a correct answer to the question being asked, but also trying to figure out what other topics are being asked in the question and determining whether or not you really understand those concepts at what as well. So if you do understand those concepts as well, then you're covering a lot of knowledge ground all by doing a set of, let's say 30 questions, 50 questions, you're covering a lot of knowledge ground. And then what you will see is over time that the questions start to kind of become redundant. And once you get to that point of redundancy, then you know that you've covered pretty much everything that the examiners want you to know. The key of test taking that I found is learning the patterns. So a lot of questions are asked about a certain subject area, which are considered high yield areas. And that's the pattern that you want to find. What are the high yield areas that are consistently being asked on these exams? And those are the areas that you need to know forwards, backwards, up and down, because they may ask those questions in so many different ways to try to glean your knowledge, to glean your understanding of a really important concept. Focus on the high yield stuff. And then all the other topics that tend to be less frequently asked, you may wanna master those, again, by looking at the questions that you're being asked and noticing if they're being mentioned. And then from there, doing a further in-depth study of that information, because it may not be as important as you think. And then lastly, one of the really important strategies I learned is practice, practice, practice. Can't emphasize that enough. The more you practice, the more you'll see different types of questions and you'll be able to figure out whether or not you truly understand those concepts. So for my MCAT, I took a Kaplan review course. Actually, I also took Kaplan review course for my USMLE Step 1. And I found that um, it was very helpful in helping me to put the information into more digestible sections and also help me to create my study plan. There's a lot of questions available through their question banks. So I think that's a great other resource. They are not sponsoring this video, but this is just my experience. So you can use any study review course that will provide you with the same kind of structure because really all you need is a structured plan of study. And then lastly, use your friends, your study group as a resource. You know, people may understand topics better than you. So use them as a help if you're having trouble understanding a concept. You want to make your day a well-rounded one so that you're not getting overwhelmed with questions and getting fatigued or, you know, getting easily distracted because you feel like it's too much. So you want to build those breaks into your study session and really focus yourself on meeting those goals and rewarding yourself when you're done. So I just want to encourage you guys to keep practicing, keep studying. Remember, the more you do, the better you're going to get, the quicker you're going to see the patterns and the examination format. And that will lead you toward understanding how to tackle questions and to be more successful. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, take care. See you.